Hey Xanthocrite fans, I'm Chris Kruger. I'm Doc. And we're Doc and Kruger Games. Today we're passing through a deep and wooded forest, or maybe not so deep, but wooded, uh, to test Crone Spell. This is a prototype board that we have printed out here, and we just grabbed a few uh, chess pieces we had on hand. And we're going to show you how the game works. So the pieces we have here are the crown, which we're representing using a king piece from chess. And I've got two priests, which we're representing with bishops. Eight pretender pieces lined up here. Uh, the way you can sort of reference this when you're setting it up is you look for the black pieces on the second row, and then you just sort of match them up with the adjacent white piece right below that. A useful term that'll be good for you to know as we talk about how the game is played. An adjacent piece is any piece that lines up along a side. So for example, these two pieces right here would not be adjacent, but these two pieces would be because they share an edge. So you'll notice, of course, that the board is triangular. So one of the great things about that as a design is that you only have three adjacent spaces instead of four. To go over each of the pieces, as we mentioned, we're using pawns as pretenders. And so all pieces can move any distance they want in any direction. For example, this piece from here could go here, or you could go all the way across this way, all the way across that way, all the way that way, and so on. One way to think of the board is as a series of lanes. So we'd actually have one, two, three, four, five, six lanes going one way, and of course, six lanes going the other way. Each of the triangles looked at as white, black, white, black, white, black along a row shows you the entire lane that your piece can move. Any piece can go as far as it wants along a lane, as long as it's not blocked by another piece. The next piece is the priest. And the priests have a very interesting ability where they can teleport to uh, not any adjacent space, but any space adjacent to adjacent spaces. In other words, if this piece here is on a black piece, I can go to any of the surrounding black spaces. It's always gonna be the same color as the piece you're teleporting to. And again, this can be any piece. So if I happen to have a pretender on my side, I can teleport to the pretender. If I have the crown, I can teleport to the crown. The special ability of the crown piece is the crown piece cannot be jumped. So if I had a piece here, crown piece can't be jumped, which is a very, very useful ability. All pieces are able to jump. So the way the jumping works is any adjacent piece. If you look at the triangle that you're jumping, it's kind of like an arrow. You follow the arrow to tell you where you want to land. So this piece here would jump to there. What is not a jump is jumping over that piece and then landing on the adjacent piece on the other side. So that is not a jump. You also can't jump if that's your position. That can be your destination, but it can't be your starting point. Exactly. So you have to be adjacent to the space you're jumping, but you can't land on an adjacent space. So the object of the game, the pretender is trying to capture the crown, and the crown is trying to hold the crown against the pretender. The winner of the game is whoever is the crown and manages to keep the crown for a round. If the pretender takes the crown, then we're going to switch sides, and the pretender now plays as the crown and vice versa until someone is able to hold the crown. There are several different victory conditions you can have. So on the pretender side, we have what's called a coup. A coup means trapping the crown piece by surrounding them on all adjacent pieces with pieces owned by the pretender. So that, for example, would be a coup. Now, it doesn't matter what type of piece this is. It could be, for example, if you've managed to capture a, uh, a priest. It could be a priest and two pretenders. It could also be two priests and one pretender. It could be three pretenders. It could be any combination. It's also worth noting that it doesn't have to be in the middle of the board. Exactly. If the crown is on the edge of the board, you can capture using only two adjacent pieces. So essentially, each adjacent space is occupied, the crown is captured. And interestingly enough, the very top space up here, we like to call it the throne because that's where the crown starts. If you have even one pretender right there, that's the only adjacent space that would count as a coup. There are two other ways the pretender can win. One is if the pretender controls all pieces except the crown because the crown can never be converted except by winning the game, then the crown loses because it's the only piece left. The other way that the pretenders can win is through abdication, which is when the crown concedes. So if the crown concedes, the pretender wins and he'll switch sides. One of the ways the crown can win is called suppression. So what this is, is essentially when the total number of pieces controlled by the pretender, when the pretender loses half their pieces, they control four or fewer total. Now it doesn't matter what type of pieces they are. For example, the pretender could own both priests, um, but if they own only two pretenders and two priests, and the crown controls the rest of the pretenders, the crown still wins. So if for 
example, we got to the place where the crown owns that many pieces, the crown wins by suppression. The other way the crown can win is called apathy. What happens then is if the pretender concedes or if there's a stalemate. Now it's worth mentioning that you always have to make your move when it's your turn. You can't pass a turn unless you're conceding. So if the same moves are going back and forth and back and forth, that's going to be considered a stalemate, which is an apathy victory for the crown. Conversions happen whenever a piece is jumped. So if my pretender piece jumps that priest, that means I get to convert the priest. It keeps all of its powers and abilities, but now it's mine. Another way you can convert is by multi-jumping. Now you can jump over as many pieces as you want as long as it's a legal jump. And it doesn't matter if it's friend or foe or both. So what I can do here, for example, is I can take my priest, I can jump over one pretender, and jump over the other one. I don't know. And then both of those are converted to my side. Oh, great. You're halfway to victory now. Mm -hmm. We wanted to share a few common strategies and things that might be of interest to you as you get into playing Kron's spell. First of all, it's worth noting that the crown piece, because it can't be jumped, is actually a very, very powerful piece. Maybe the most powerful piece in the game because you can do things like blocking jumps and conversions and multi-jumps. Now, with the king being vulnerable, some players have historically used a strategy where they put their piece right here. We like to call this the foot of the throne. This strategy has been called a number of different things, uh, most commonly known as the throne gambit. And what this does is essentially it counts on the king not being able to be surrounded because no one can jump the king to get here, and you can only get two pieces, two opposing pieces right here. So even if we put two pretenders right there, for example, no one can get there so the king can't be captured. Th that being said, that's not the only way the pretenders can win, like we mentioned. At this point, it's going to come down to the, the crown player counting on being able to take on the pretender using only these couple of pieces and whatever else they manage to capture. So it's actually a very difficult way to win. Some people think of it as cowardly, some people think of it as cheating. It is a valid strategy and one that is actually not as successful as you might think. It also is going to tie up three pieces for the entire game. It's also common for players to try to protect their pieces by having them hang out along the edges. Now when this happens, you can see that it's hard to jump because obviously you can't jump to a space that is empty. However, when you're on the edges too much, as we said, it only takes two pretenders to capture the king. Of course, as soon as I move one of those in, you just might jump one of my pretenders and convert it. So what starts to happen in the game is that you start to anticipate your opponent's moves and try to put them into... So what might seem like a really great move could actually be a trap. Another very common strategy we see a lot is called pinning, where you place a piece somewhere to block a jump. So for example, if it's the pretender's turn and they want to be able to jump this piece, they can't because its landing space is blocked by one of my pieces. So even if you've got a friendly piece in the space, I want to be able to jump here, I can't because I've got a piece in the way. One way to surround the crown is actually to keep them from being able to jump over the pieces that are surrounding it. An important note as well, if you manage to surround the crown, you win on the turn that you make the move. So even though the crown could very easily jump over this piece here, because that piece just moved there, that's a victory for the pretenders. And don't forget, as soon as you convert a piece, you win. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and demo a game of Crow and Spell from the beginning. I've challenged Doc to a game, and as per tradition, the challenger always starts off as the pretenders, so I'm gonna be playing as the pretenders. Meanwhile, Doc is the crown, and he's gonna to try to keep the crown while I try to take it. Hail the king, baby. And so the pretenders always move first, so I'm gonna get started by moving this guy up here. Ooh, bold move. Let's see if it works out for you. I know no fear, so I'm just gonna get this. Meanwhile, I'm gonna move this guy across the board putting me in position to potentially take your crown if you're not careful. Yeah, I guess I'd better uh, do something about that, huh? Move in, priest. Well, I think I'm going to keep your king from going anywhere by moving this guy over here. Well, I wasn't expecting you to be quite so aggressive, so go defend my crown. So you just teleported back to the priest. I did. Well, now you're in a position to jump me, so I think I will bring in a little bit of backup. I'd love it if you would back up. <laughs> well, I'll edge forward. I'm in a pretty good position up here, and I don't want to open myself to jumps, so I think that I will just bring in a little bit more backup. Jumps, you say? Sounds good to me. I'm just going to keep positioning my backup. Yes, you do that. Hmm, nice. Fortunately, I happen to have a piece that can block that. I did notice that. I was hoping you wouldn't. <laughs> well, I'm not dead yet. 
let's dig this grave just a little bit deeper. Well, I know that the crown can't be jumped, and the only way you can win is by surrounding me, so I'm going to take a chance. Jumping my own piece, putting myself into danger, but knowing that you can't possibly capture me, at least not this turn. I'm going to make a little bit of a risky move and put myself into position here. And I'm going to get the heck out of Dodge. Just to make sure that you can't take this piece, I'll have him jump out of the way. And since I've repositioned, I'm going to make sure you don't get any crazy ideas. (laughs) Skin into position. There. Now I'm ready to start the fight. Good job getting out of that corner. I gotta admit, you, uh... You made it difficult, and I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> I can't help but notice you've spaced yourself out in such a way that it would be very difficult for me to put something into position where I can have two jumps and set a trap. That's the plan. That's okay. If nothing else, I'll make you react. And react I shall, for better or for worse. I'm going to use this wall to my advantage. And I'm going to get this guy out of the way. Fine by me. Hmm, interesting move. If you liked that one, you'll love this one. <laughs> Two down, one to go. Uh oh. Well, so much for that trap. I guess I better teleport back. Because if I let you move this guy in here, it's game over for me. It's true. Wow, you blocked my double jump and my double jump. (laughs) Unfortunately, I'm getting into a corner here where there aren't that many moves that I can make that won't free up you to take me. Let's try teleporting again. That's how the crown gets out of a jam. And it's going to free you up a little bit, but I will gain a quite powerful ally. Ah! You dirty traitor! I have to admit, I'm a little nervous now. My only chance is to try to get a couple of pieces back. Ah, a safe move. In that case, I'm going to take the chance to put on a little bit more pressure. Oh, great. Uh, Well, I've got to block him, so... Let's get a little bit more in position. I don't like the direction this is going. My moves are limited here. There's not much I can do with my priest, or else you'll come in for the kill. Um, I might need to take a chance. Because if I convert your priest, then I win just as easily as pinning the crown. Yeah, tell me about it. I can't move the king unless... I don't know. But I hate being up against the wall. At least it's a black space that's not as dangerous. You'd still need the three whites to take me. And let's get started on that, shall we? No, let's not. (laughs) Well, no guts, no glory. You might want to think twice about making that jump. Teleporting to this guy. Ah! When he stole my piece, he stole his powers too. All right. A different jump then. Boom. Ah, well played. Take that back. It's trying to lose people. My subjects know they're true king. Well, everything's starting to fall apart a little bit. I think it's time to get a little fancy. Let's go one, two, three, four. And along the way, I pick up that guy. Ouch. It's a good thing you can't jump the king. You need some religion. Time for a little backup. Abort, abort. And into position. I have a fear that I'm reacting. Sneaking around. Time to teleport. 
get some more guys on the scene. I do not fear you. <laughs> Tempting. That's what you're doing. That's unfortunate. Do you see what I'm doing now? No reason not to get in there. I was hoping you would. That's not nice. Hmm. Turning up the pressure. You know what? I think I can live with losing that guy. And... Unfortunately, uh, I just realized I can't. <laughs> Good game. All right, so now we'll switch sides, and I'll play as the crown. So I think I'll start this by getting one of my pretenders way out there. And the first thing I'm going to do is move my crown up to here to make sure that he can't be captured from being there. I'm liking this aggressive strategy, so I think I'm going to throw another one out there. I'm going to go in and put myself in a position to potentially jump one of your pieces. One? Looks like two to me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fine. I can block it. And I'm going to move my crown into a place where I can start having a little bit more mobility. Well, one might think that I should move mine in there, but since he's got his priest in the way, it really wouldn't do me much good right now. Let's play it out and see how it works. So I can't jump this piece because it's pinned by my priest. However, I can escape by jumping over my own priest. There wasn't much chance of that lasting. Looks like I need to bring a few new pieces in. The crown has all the power and all the special abilities, but I've got the numbers. I'm going to just sort of set up some positioning here. I have no idea what you're doing, and that makes me nervous. <laughs> well, I know I can't jump the crown, but maybe I can exploit this to my advantage in a minute. If nothing else, maybe I'll scare him off a little. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that the crown can't be jumped to put myself in position to maybe take over that piece that's blocking my priest. Well, there's a lot of ways I could get out of that, but I like having my pieces down towards the crown. And now my priest can go ahead and teleport to a space that happens to know is safe. So there I teleported to the crown, going to one of the same colored spaces surrounding the crown. Right now I'm just posturing. Maybe that throwaway move will become important later. Well, I'm not a huge fan of posturing, so I'm going to take advantage of your vulnerability right now. Okay. You can convert that piece if you want. I'll convert it right back. Or will you? No, is the answer to that. All right, I better set up something a little more complex. I'm glad you missed that. Ah, oh, man. I'm gonna slide this guy here. I think what terrifies me the most is I have no idea why you did that. But I'll take advantage of being able to jump my own piece. Pro tip, don't narrate your moves as you make them. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that this will become a net game. Now I'm only one piece away from winning by suppression. Excellent. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Oops. <laughs> well, since I failed to take the crown as the pretender, the crown wins. Hopefully that demo gave you a nice taste of crone spell and a, uh, a sense of the strategic depth that can come with the game. Definitely. I want a rematch. That could probably be arranged. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Hail to the king. Hail to the thing of duel.